Hi everyone, my name is Ira Fay. I'm the head tournament organizer for the 2022 World Tournament for War of the Ring, and this is just a quick video for tournament players who want a little more detail about how to use Challenge, which is the website we're using to manage the pairings. So I'm just going to jump in and show you quickly. I want to show you the game report, how to link your game log, and then to update your challenge display name. So um, just to show you the game log, I'm going to do an actual game log because I recently completed my game and I do have a video about that if you want to go watch that. But either way, um, obviously you want to type in right here, you're typing in your ladder name or your discord name. If for whatever reason it's different from challenge, you're using your discord name here. And if I'm not sure exactly what my opponent's name is, I can click on this and it will take me to a page with the ladder on it and I can find, I can find their name right here. Okay. So this is what, this is what you're looking for. Um, all right. So I know that my opponent's name was back drift. And actually, even now that I'm typing it, I'm not totally sure is it back drift or back drifts. And so I'm looking closely. This is the current ladder. I'm going to look on the all time ladder back drift and it's back drifts. Okay, so it will save the ladder manager's time if you get this exactly right. I had a free people military victory, so I write that down. It was a base game. We used Java. And this was ladder and tournament. This is a very important part of the process. Make sure you click ladder and tournament because this is a tournament game. Okay, we happen to use two action tokens. It was round eight when the game ended. The fellowship had seven corruption and this is an optional, but um, no, they did not make it. And um, this is required, so I'll put zero there. And if I want to fill in the strongholds, I could, but the most important thing is I want to put the game notes and the passwords. So I'm going to click add file. And then if you look at your, um, hard drive, you have maybe the war of the ring Gandalf folder. And in there you have the, the jar file. So this is the root folder that I'm in when I'm going to find my log. And then I go into this logs folder. So if I double if I double click on that, then we can see all of these different all of these different video uh, sorry folders that I have, and I keep track in my uh, 2022 folder all of my tournament games from 2022. Now, if you didn't happen to save your game while you were playing, that's fine. You can still go to logs and go to auto. And then that will keep, you'll keep, the game automatically saves logs as you play. So I recommend saving it, but you know, if you, if you forgot or for whatever reason don't have it, you can look here. And if you notice the file size, the ones that are bigger are going to be the ones that probably are actual, actual full games. So in any case, I know for sure that this particular game was right here. So I'm just going to double click that and then we upload it to the Google Drive. So, and for a tournament, it is required to upload your game logs. All right, so then I'm gonna submit this and um, it'll say, great, we're gonna update the log. In the meantime, you can see the current status here. So you're now basically done after game one, but you would save a little bit of time for the tournament organizers if you then click on this right here, it will take you to the ladder page and specifically we'll see it We'll see it right here. So what that means is I can go uh, see the game that I just submitted. And if I scroll all the way to column W, we can see that Google has thoughtfully generated a link to the log that I just uploaded. So if I copy this, I'm, I'm selecting this and copying this link. So I just pressed control C. And now I'm going to go to the challenge page challenge.com slash war of the ring 2022. It's going to take me to this page and then I can go to my match. I can find my match. Let's see where it is uh, right here. And I'm on, if you're on mobile, maybe it's slightly different interface, but on, on desktop, I mouse over my match and then this extra sort of hover thing shows up. And if I click directly on the paperclip, then it takes me to this attachment 
tab. Now, if I had just clicked on the report scores, that's also fine. I can then just click on attachments up here. But either way, I'm on attachments and then it's not a file, it's a link. So I just change that to link and then I paste in my, um, my log. And so that's game one. And I, now anybody who comes to this tournament anytime in the future will be able to see my game log. And that's useful for the tournament organizers and it's useful for future players, you know, if you want to see what's going on. So that's what I'm asking people to do. Once you finish game two in your match, you're going to do that same thing. You're going to update, you're going to post it to the ladder and then you're going to ideally copy and, and include the link. And then you want to click on report scores. And here you just type, let's say we go 1-1, one, one, then we type in 1-1 one, one, and it's a tie and you click submit. Or if you happen to go 2-0, then you write 2-0. So, so that's, that's all you have to do. And then once you do submit scores, that's it. If you report after only one game of your match and click submit scores, it will lock it for you and you'll have to contact a tournament organizer to open it up again. That's not a big deal, but basically wait until you finish both games to report your scores. Okay, the one other thing I want to show on Challenge is that you can, if you have uh, a Challenge name that happens to be different from your Discord name, you can just go to your settings. Just go to your settings on the tournament page, and then you can set your name to be whatever it is on Discord so that people can easily find you on Discord, even if your challenge name doesn't match. We're using Discord names as the key. So just go to your settings and change it. All right, I'm going to show one other thing, which is if we go to the um, logs. So I just want to show quickly. Um, let's see. One moment. So I go to my, I go to my, I'm on Windows here. So I go to my um, folder that has my Java program in it and I go to logs. I double click on it. And now let's say I want to update this log to embed my password in it. And I do this after every game because I remember what my password is right after I played. And that way, if I ever come back to it, I'll be able to still remember it. And if anybody, if I send the log to anybody, then they can see it too. So all you have to do is you just double click on this. And this is a .log file, but it's basically just a plain text file. So you can open it with any sort of um, text editing program. I happen to have a program called uh, TextPad, but really anything would be fine. Okay, so in TextPad, all you have to do is go anywhere in the file. I usually do it after we um, pick sides. And then you just add these lines. So you type, I'll just show it again here. You type less than game greater than, and then you can type whatever you want. And then I usually just type FP for free people password equals this is my password, right? Whatever it happened to be for that game. I had already done it in this log and that's why this is here, but normally you wouldn't see this here. You just put it in. And then when somebody is playing the game later, they, they will see this after after they're just looking at the chat log, it'll show up in the chat log as something that the game says. So the only weird thing is that I think partially as a safety feature, I'm not exactly sure why, if you end a line with your password, it will actually not appear in chat. And so to get around that, I just add a space. If you just add like a blank space after you type your password, then it will show up in chat. So that's a weird thing. I'm not sure why that exists, but that's how it is right now. So um, this is a great way, in my opinion, of keeping track of your passwords. And I hope that people will choose to include their passwords because there are some really interesting decisions that happen around discarding cards or when you're playing what. And there are some exciting moments when you top deck something. So um, I hope that people will choose to embed passwords in their log files and then upload them. I hope this has been helpful. If you have any questions, please get in touch with tournament organizers in the Tournament General channel. Thanks so much. Hope everybody's having fun.